I'm about to spar one of the biggest judo open mats I've ever seen. And I don't even do judo. The Plex is a giant sports and events facility just south of where I live and train in San Jose, California. It's capable of housing hundreds of people. And today, it was housing a small army of judokas. Oh, and me. Today's event would be divided into a small section of technique drilling, followed by a bunch of sparring, also known in Japanese judo terminology as randori. I was meeting up with my good friend, BJJ Brown Belt Matt Guffey, who would not only be cameraman today, but also one of my only beacons of support. Since I knew basically nobody here, and Matt had been helping me prepare for today by being my practice dummy for throws. Yeah, I, I just parked in like a random spot, I don't know. You're on, you're on camera right now. Oh, I am? Yeah, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea what to expect. This is my first time doing judo sparring ever. <laughs> We were a bit lost already. For the judo, yeah. Oh, so it'll just be the next building over, so just go down the stairway over here to the left. I'm currently not at one of the biggest judo open mats I've ever seen. <laughs> we were also a bit late, and as we made our way through a maze of arcade games, we stumbled upon a hockey rink full of judo players. And at that moment, I realized my lack of judo skill wouldn't be the only reason I'd be out of place. You said I'm gonna be the only one wearing a black gi, huh? And everybody else, I guess, is wearing the, the wider blue judo gi. Nice. And I've got my jujitsu blue belt on. I hope nobody mistakes me for a judo blue belt. I went to check in and saw my friend and judo black belt, Saria, who is as culpable as Aton was for getting me into judo. I felt more at ease knowing more of my community was present, but I wondered how she really thought I would fare at the event. But we'll hear more from her later. German judo instructor Sensei Tony Lettner was already teaching some techniques when I bumped into Aton. He said, uh, no leg locks. Ashigarami is a dangerous technique and is not allowed in randori or in competition. After almost 250 jiu-jitsu competition matches, around 80% of my submission wins have come via ankle lock, which is a big reason I'm here at all, because I want to develop a more well-rounded game, and to do that, I need to be comfortable on my feet instead of just pulling guard all the time. That's the advice you gave me. <laughs> my jiu-jitsu friend turned judo mentor who invited me, Aton Gelber, will be medic today. Hopefully, I don't need him for that, even though in the back of my mind, I'm a little worried about hurting myself. I'm about to step outside of my comfort zone and navigate a completely new territory of the world of martial arts. As with BJJ competition, will this judo sparring be another growth opportunity, or will I just walk away hurt physically and mentally? I got onto the mat and my worry amplified, not only because this was the second time I'd ever seen judo instruction in person, but also because I could barely hear a word he was saying. Luckily, the move he was showing was a sumigeshi, which I'd used before in BJJ as a defense to single leg takedowns. But he was showing some advanced setups and I was struggling to grasp the gripping sequence, worried I'd look like an idiot when it came time to find a drilling partner. I hid my anxiety behind a smile as I looked around sheepishly for a partner willing to drill with the weird BJJ guy in the wrong gi. I wasn't sure if the etiquette was the same in judo as BJJ, where in new environments, you typically wait for black belts to ask you to drill or spar. But I decided to shoot my shot and ask the black belt standing around if he wanted to drill, and he happily accepted. I wondered though if everyone would be as chill as him. I guess I would find out. As we drilled, I tried to treat it the same as I would in BJJ. Just be fluid and cooperative. Not a limp noodle, nor a stiff 2x4, but somewhere in between. I was having fun and learning, but the confidence I was gaining would be short-lived as we transitioned into the next part of the event. I wasn't sure where to go. Do I go with the lighter group since I'm new or the heavier group? As I was deciding, Aton had found a partner for me already. It was Sela, his son. Aton had showed me videos before of Sela. It was time for the first round of the day. Sela was going pretty light on me, and I wondered, would everyone else be as nice as him? With his grips and even just the smallest of movements, he was already putting me off balance, a concept called Kazushi. Now that we'd broken the ice with a throw, it was my turn to start looking for something. So I started with one of the few things I knew, what I had tried to learn today, the sumigeshi. You gotta start somewhere, right? I tried again, looking for the belt grip that Tony showed us. 
but as we circled, Sela took advantage of my weight leaning backwards and used that against me. I went for a Sasai, a throw I'd been working on in BJJ, but then Sela went for his specialty. From Ujimata. <laughs> I remembered this from one of the first videos his dad ever showed me, and that's what we call an Ipon. I went for my Sasai again, and as a cooperative uke, Sela let me finish it so that I could get some practice. He then set up a Tomoe Nagi, another throw we often see in BJJ. And that's when the first round of the day ended, and I couldn't have asked for a better partner to kick it off. I'm 15, <laughs> brown, belt, brown belt in judo, uh, sophomore in high school. Yeah, and a wrestler. <laughs> that's like a side thing, though. Yeah, yeah. Wrestler is a side thing. All right, I think I'm gonna ask Corwin. He's a coach at CJ Judo. He's a black belt. I'm gonna see if he'll be willing to do a round of randori with me. Uh, uh, the only problem is I have a torn ACL. With his ACL injury, he wasn't in shape to spar, but he did give me some etiquette advice that was critical to understanding judo sparring culture. Way later, after the filming of this video, I had a chance to interview Chuck as well at CJ Judo. My name is Chuck Jefferson. I'm the owner and operator of CJ Judo in San Jose, California. And uh, how long has CJ Judo been around? So I started CJ Judo in uh, 2012, after I was retired from my competitive days of Judo. Uh, but Judo's been a, a lifetime for me. Started Judo, believe it or not, in 1981. Now, Chuck wouldn't offer up the following information on his own since he's a very humble guy. So I asked him for some specifics about his career highlights. Was the Olympic team alternate in 2008 and a two-time Pan American champion. Did you have national titles as well? Yeah, I won, the, uh, I won the U.S. Nationals multiple times. Uh, I was a four-time college national champion and, and many-time junior national champion. Yeah. <laughs> I've done everything I can to promote the sport of judo. Uh, my most recent venture is Judo United, a company that I started to promote events and experiences in the sport of judo. Uh, we do tournaments, training camps, seminars, and anything that will promote the sport of judo. And he echoed a similar sentiment as Corwin about judo sparring culture. One of the big things with etiquette in judo is partner choice and who you choose to train with. In judo, it is highly encouraged to chase after the best guy in the gym. Most of the time, that upper rank guy will go with you and help you. But when I go to a training camp, my coach says, go after the best people in the room. Before I moved on to find my next sparring partner, Corwin gave me some advice. Yeah, and I took my very first class with Corwin in judo. <laughs> And did now amazing, let me add. I'm doing my first ever randori. Do you have any tips for me? Get your grip first. Get my grip yep. first. And initiate your, get your feet going, get your ashplaza going. Okay. Use your movement to open up those bigger throws. Okay. Don't just try to go into those big throws right away, right? Get the movement going. Yes. That's like what yeah. we're doing at class, yeah. And don't be too stiff. Don't you be gotta so loosen right. up. Stay relaxed. Relax. Keep my hips up, right? Yeah. It's not, like not that Bruce Lee too. say, be like water. Be like water. Yeah. Okay. Then they can't feel when you're going to come in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stay loose, don't be a jiu-jitsu guy. I quickly found my next partner, also named Joshua. I asked if we could film the round, ensuring he knew I wasn't trying to highlight anybody. And he pointed at my belt as I made it clear that this was a jiu-jitsu blue belt. <laughs> All right, let's do it, man. He slap bumped, which is definitely not a judo thing, and we did the traditional bow before getting into our round. His movement was fluid and graceful. Anytime I entered into a throw, he cooperated with it in such a way that made it easy to execute my techniques smoothly, almost making it appear as if I knew what I was doing. And it turns out this is an essential part of being a good uke. It didn't feel like we were fighting. Instead, it felt like we were dancing. I cooperated with his throws as well. I could feel his movement and entrances into his techniques, and I went with them, focusing on being light and falling correctly. This was so different than BJJ sparring. Most people can't actually flow roll. But right now, it felt like we were flow throwing. Joshua moved on to sparring with some more advanced judokas as I found myself on the search yet again for another partner, but carefully avoiding the ones who looked like they might kill me. What do you think, Matt? That was intense. 
Aton gave me some advice on who to ask next. Oh, he said I should go with one of the Korean um, girl coaches. Is he? But it didn't go quite the way I saw it in my head. She said no. I got totally shot down. <laughs> now, some places that guy will tell you no. It's a no. It's a big no. All right, but the mission continues. I'm gonna find somebody to annihilate me. I was determined though, so I went to find the nearest black belt around my size. And after I explained to him that I was not trying to highlight anyone on camera, he agreed to do a round with me. We started out the round pretty easy, feeling each other out, but I sensed some hesitation on his part, as if he was analyzing me for something. And that's when I realized he had been looking at my stance, because I was doing everything backwards. See, I'm right-handed, and I come from a Muay Thai background where my right hand is my power hand, so I have my left foot forwards. That's a very standard stance in all striking sports. In fact, it's the most common, to where if you stand with your right foot forward, people would call you a southpaw, which is less common. Just like my opponent, actually, in this fight. But in judo, if I'm a right-handed player, I lead with my right leg and my right hand, just like my partner is doing here. So I kept my left leg forward like he said to do, and he switched my grips, which felt really strange, but I guess that was more orthodox for a left foot forward player like me. The problem is though, I know all of my turn throws with the opposite grips, like the ones I was doing with Joshua before. While this was an interesting exercise, I was now doubting my entire judo game, or what little there was to begin with. And this round turned out to be more of a puzzle than an athletic endeavor. Although I was beginning to notice the power of the foot sweep. Per usual, Aton led me to my next partner. This is, this is Nancy, by the way. Her grips immediately felt strong, and I was struggling to set up anything I wanted, when suddenly she hit me with a clean Uchibata. That was fun. She even had someone cheering for her mat side. Hi, I was keeping a smile on my face, but this was the point where it really began to set in just how big the skill gap is between me and real judokas. I basically had no chance to hit any techniques, unless Nancy let me. I also didn't want to make a classic beginner mistake that you see in BJJ all the time going too hard and spazzing. While I was tempted to use strength and try to muscle her down, I knew it would be ineffective against someone at her level, and at the minimum lead to a bad round for both of us, and at maximum lead to someone getting hurt. That was Nancy. Nancy doesn't play around. So this morning, um, I did the coffee crew. Um, and like the third round, I sprained my thumb. So like I don't even have use of this thumb right now. So like I'm also trying to grip, but I just have like these four fingers to grip with. So, but there is no what is it? There is no there is no victory without perseverance. Uh, George Washington probably said that. So I watched Dawn as we waited for the next round to begin, admiring the intricate movement patterns of everyone around me. Now, it was time to spar with Matthew. While this round was still controlled, I definitely sensed a difference in speed and intensity. And then once again, I was told my stance was wrong. I was still getting beat up, but I did begin to notice something from the round so far. The thing I'm noticing about the way we're doing judo sparring here, compared to like how we only do it at jujitsu. Jujitsu, everybody's like super tight and like hips back and everybody here that I'm going with, they're just constantly creating this movement. And it's just move, like constantly just moving around. There's no like, these like jujitsu battles where we're just standing there gripping the death grip. Around? Yeah. You wanna do around? Yeah. <laughs> she was three quarters my size, but I had no intention of underestimating her. And I was right in not doing so. She hit me immediately with the turn throw, and I was amazed at the speed and grace with which she executed it. I had heard before that being shorter than someone you're throwing can be an advantage, since you're able to get your entire body under their center of gravity much more easily. And it clicked right now that that's exactly what was happening. Despite it appearing that the size difference would lead me to doing well in this round, Anne's technical ability combined with her size made her a formidable sparring partner. As she continued with more throws, I began to resist a bit more, but it was futile. <laughs> and I felt a slight sense of frustration that I still couldn't manage to do much of anything, even on an undersized opponent. Oh man. Wanna go next time? Yeah, let's do one. Once again? We can go the round after this. 
Yeah, I'm trying to switch to right now. I'm just trying to see what we're doing. Well, pick one. I, I vote, I vote left, left. Just because you're naturally like this, so it might be easier okay. to not switch your stance. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna try Go left ahead. for this just round. Try. Let's see. Yeah. Just be careful these high level <laughs> now I was nervous. This whole backwards grip situation had been confusing me since several rounds ago, and now Bobby was suggesting I try this entire round in a left-handed stance, despite my grips feeling more comfortable on the right-hand side. This was my most intense opponent yet. His grips and speed were strong, and I felt threatened at every move. And on top of that, I was committed to using an entirely different stance than what I was used to. It almost felt useless to even try. That's okay. Left hand left up. Left hand lapel. Left hand lapel, and then you sleep hand. There you go. Now circle towards your sleeve. Yeah. Move towards your sleeve. Other way. Circle towards your right. Go right. Circle right. There you go. Just circle right. Move right. There you go. Just keep moving right. Nice shot. With his coaching advice, I felt more confident that I may be able to understand the stance more. Even with cues as simple as knowing which side to circle towards. I'd come this far already and made it through many previous rounds, so I wasn't going to give up now. I was getting thrown all over the place, but I was going to keep working because that would be the only way to learn anything from this round. I didn't manage to get any throws, but I did persevere at least. And Joaquin even complimented me. And Aton also had some encouraging words for me. You know, Josh doesn't have a lot of experience yet in judo, but the good thing, he knows how to take good falls. This oh. is really important, actually. Okay. We accept all the things of, like, throwing people. First, if you resist too much the fall, you're going to get injured, and you're, you're taking us good falls, okay. which is the most important thing for okay. a beginner in judo. Okay. So good job. Great. Thank you. Progress isn't always obvious at first, but it's there if you look for it, even in the smallest ways. You have to chip away at the stone one hammer strike at a time, and you must seek discomfort in order to extract the lessons and foster growth. I learned a lot more today about navigating a new culture, what it means to be around a supportive community, the utility of mentorship, and how to learn, adapt, stay humble, and persevere. Even as an experienced martial artist, I still got nerves going in here today. A very similar feeling to when I first started Muay Thai years ago, and again when I started up with Jiu Jitsu a little while back. But you realize that everything's probably gonna be fine, and the hesitation and anxiety is actually a signal that it's an opportunity for growth, not something to be avoided. Consider the circumstances and understand that you don't need to let fear stop you from even starting. Don't be your only obstacle if the opportunity is there in front of you. And remember why you're doing this in the first place. That's great, I love that. Since this event, I've actually joined CJ Judo and made so many new friends, learned many new skills, and have had opportunities that I would have never had if it weren't for an encouraging community and stepping outside of my comfort zone. So I encourage you to do the same because it can only work to your benefit. Oh, and I finally got to talk to Saria after the day ended. I did my, my first ever judo class. Are you, are you nervous to be on camera? Uh, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Can you say your name for the camera? Saria. You're a judo black belt and we train together in jujitsu. We do. I have my jujitsu belt in my bag. So uh, what color is that? It's not as impressive. It's a white belt, but I have two stripes, so. I would say that's impressive. <laughs> um, and so you were there helping coach me at my first ever judo class. Um, how, from your perspective, how did that go? I think it went well. Like, you move well, so. It's probably years of doing martial arts, you know? So, like, I was not afraid of you coming here to the open mat and doing rounds with people, because you know how to fall safely and you know enough to at least like get some good rounds in so like right. that's me and jiu-jitsu I have no idea what I'm doing but it just kind of makes stuff up until someone tells me to do otherwise okay that's what I was doing here I felt yeah. like I was just making stuff up and like every once in a while they somebody would fall for me and, and they'd be like nice I'd be like thanks <laughs> can you throw me or are you still hurt I can throw you
hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. If you're scared to try something, just try it. You won't regret it, I promise. Catch you guys in the next one. Big O's. Hold on, I'm gonna disappear out of the front. Don't move, don't move. That's how I'm gonna make it disappear.